Hello and welcome to the Global Dialogue. I'm Shireen Bhan and it is my pleasure to welcome back on the program the Global CEO of Alstom, Henry Lafarge, who's uh, been in India previously but hasn't been here for a while now. Mr. Lafarge, many thanks for joining us here uh, back on the program on Global Dialogue. The last conversation that you and I had in person was in 2018, so it's been a while since then. Uh, so welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon everybody and thank you for hosting me uh, today. Yeah, it has been a while. We had COVID, it didn't be time, I have to say, but it's a pleasure to be here back. Well, let me start by talking to you about the global outlook. Uh, it is a challenging environment that we live in today. Inflation, of course, continues to be a big worry and a big concern. How much of an impact is that likely to continue to have as far as the guidance that you've held out for 25-26? Well, the global environment is, is pretty good for us globally. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of countries in the world which are investing in railway infrastructure. I mean, this is the most sustainable means of transportation, so not surprisingly, a lot of authorities, public authorities, are easily invested, uh, investing in this means of transportation. So the global market is very nice for us. It's very positive, very buoyant, I have to say, from Europe to North America to Asia, and here, of course, we'll come back to that in, in, in India. So we have a very good prospect. And of course, we had some macroeconomic challenges in the previous years. Uh, we had the inflation, we had the supply chains as well, mm. uh, disruptions which had happened. But I think these things are, are more smoothing uh, now in 2023. So we are moving positively uh, towards the uh, next years. Okay, so moving positively, you had an unprecedented uh, order backlog as well, uh, in excess of 87 billion euros. So you feel confident that demand is going to continue to look strong for you in the year ahead? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the demand is extremely strong. We see the pipeline rising. Uh, we have in the next uh, 18 months a record level of uh, tenders to be submitted. So the pipeline has never been as big as it is today. Uh, again, worldwide in the different regions of the world. It's probably one of the first times where all the continents are positively oriented. So there is no regions which are lagging behind. All the regions are heavily invested in rail. And whether it's for urban purposes, so a lot of metros with large cities investing in metros to replace cars, and whether it's also for main line, and this is uh, of, of course to uh, allow people uh, to be transported, but it's also uh, a way to decrease the emission of CO2. I'll get to the green transition in just a second, but I want to talk to you now about your India plans because you've, of course, been a long-term committed investor here in India. Uh, this is a big area where the government is accelerating its growth plans, its investment plans as well. How strong is the Indian market for you today? So let me tell you that India has been a, a fantastic growth story for us, both for the Indian market as well as for the export market. So yes, for the Indian market, we have the two or three main pillars, the first one being the urban market, where we have almost 50 cities uh, with a metro project, and Astom is involved in each and every metro project in all the cities in India, whether uh, it is on rolling stock or, or signaling or infrastructure. So the urban market is buoyant, but the mainline market is extremely important now, both in terms of passenger mainline, and this is relatively new uh, for us, in terms of components, traction equipment, as well as for locomotives, and we have uh, as well a, a strong relationship uh, with Indian Railway on locomotives. But for passengers, we have both for Indian Railway and as well as for RTS, you know, the uh, Delhi Meerut uh, mm -hmm. uh, corridor. Uh, you know, I want to talk about the India story with you a little bit more in specific. Uh, last year, I believe it was your fastest growing market, that's uh, 2022. Does it continue to be your fastest growing market? Uh, absolutely. I mean, our turnover in India has grown by more than 40% this year. Again, back on the local uh, market, the Indian market, which is booming, uh, but we are also exporting more and more. Uh, you know that we have more than 25% of all the engineering being done in Alstom which has been done in India, and we are aiming at 33%. One third of the entire engineering activities of Alstom will be done in India. We have also our main uh, traction components, the traction boxes factory, which is in, uh, in Coimbatore, which is one third of the market we have that in India uh, again. So you know that India for Alstom is today the first country in terms of number of employees. So the growth is supported both by the Indian market, which is growing very fast, as well as 
from the growing portion of export market as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a billion euros in turnover from India, that was the target that was set for 2023. Do you believe you're on track to be able to achieve that? We, we have 4.2 billion euros of backlog to deliver. So yes, we are on track to this kind of number. Okay, let's talk about the big opportunity that seems to be opening up and that is the Bande Bharat opportunity. You've emerged as the lowest bidder, uh, L1, as far as that uh, over 30,000 crore rupee order is concerned. But there are reports suggesting that there is a renegotiation underway with the government of India. Uh, can you shed some light on that for us? Well, first of all, let me outline how important is this uh, contract. It's, it's the first time that we will put in India an aluminium technology at large scale. So we are going to deploy this technology, which we don't yet have in India. We have stainless steel uh, technology, but we have the aluminium now uh, technology, uh, which will allow us to implement a hub for the export, an aluminium hub for the global export. So it's an extremely important, of course, project for Indian uh, teams. It's an extremely important project for Indian railway. I mean, it's a large uh, railway world will allow as well to modernize some Indian railway factories and it's also a very important uh, project uh, for going forward for the export of India. So I will not call it renegotiation as, as always. Uh, we, are, uh, we have conversation with Indian Railway to finalize the project, finalize the contract. As you can imagine for such a large project there are a lot of discussions and we are discussing and I'm very confident that we'll uh, achieve these discussions. Uh, but part of the discussion is the ask from the Indian government to bring down the price even lower because I believe that it was set at 151 crores per train set which was 11% lower uh, than the next bidder which was your competitor Stadler. So uh, what is the ask of the government as you conduct these conversations? Well, first of all, we believe that we made a, a very, very uh, good price for this uh, 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 trains, of course, and, and you don't expect me to, to share with you all the day-to-day the -day dialogue that we have. I mean, this is what, we are. again, I'm confident that we'll finalize uh, the, the contract. Again, it, would be a, it is a fantastic project for Alstom, for the Indian Railway, and uh, for the Make in India in general. Uh, but y while you can't uh, discuss the specifics of the contract or the price negotiations, what's the timeline by when you expect clarity on moving forward with this? As soon as possible. <laughs> as soon as possible. And what will that? Eventually, if this gets done and whatever price it gets done at, what will that mean in terms of operationalization of this? Uh, and, you know, what kind of investments will you need to make to be able to cater to this opportunity? So one thing which is important uh, to know is that, uh, again, this will be a new uh, technology. So we are starting, actually, to invest in terms of capabilities, in terms of know-how. So in Bangalore, we have a large engineering team to design these trains. Part of the trains and the aluminium technology will be done uh, as well uh, in the state of Gujarat, so in Savli, in our factory of Savli, where we are going to uh, uh, manufacture the, the body shell and uh, within the, the, the site of, uh, of Indian Railway. So it's a, it's a several site which will be involved and uh, which will need heavy investment both internally in Alstom and on the sites of Indian Railway. Mm -hmm. Is there an estimate of what uh, the requirement will be on the Alstom? No, we don't have clear uh, estimate there, but it's several tens of millions of euros. Okay. Uh, that's as far as the one day Bharat opportunity is concerned and, you know, uh, is there any visibility on further tendering that the railway may do that you could be potentially interested well, in? Well, uh, as you know, uh, the Indian Railway has launched several very large tenders. So as an equipment manufacturer, we are probably unique in that perspective that we have all the type of holy stock. So we are producing locomotives, we are producing uh, EMUs, so classical uh, regional trains, intercities, push pull so with locomotives, with no locomotives. So we, uh, uh, we are potentially interested by all uh, the tenders which will be launched by Indian Railways. Okay, uh, let's talk about the metro opportunity as well because you've recently uh, done further orders with the MP uh, uh, Metro Rail Corporation as well as the DMRC here okay. uh, in, in Delhi. Uh, how is that, you know, looking at this point in time, the metro landscape in India at this point in time, given your previous experience? Well, we have a, 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 an increasingly large number of cities which are being equipped with metros. You know that India has become the fourth metro network in the world uh, after uh, China, Japan and the, and the US and it's going there after day. So what is interesting is of course the cities which, have already, uh, which are already equipped or partially equipped with metros, first of uh, being uh, Delhi but also uh, in Mumbai, they are extending the networks. 
or Bangalore is sending its network, there will show add-ons in Chennai, so all, all the metros we are already implemented are extending their networks, and we have uh, new cities with uh, new metros, and we have been awarded uh, uh, metros in cities, uh, one of them of course extremely uh, well known, which is Agra, mm -hmm. we'll be uh, extremely honored to be able to have a metro in Agra, but we have that in Kampur, as we had in the past in Lucknow, in Koshi, uh, or in Bhopal and, and, and in other cities. So we have the really uh, metros being extended and as I said, roughly up to 50 cities uh, with some uh, metro projects. Uh, given the, the growth that you see in the Indian market as well as the further opportunity uh, to be able to sort of uh, expand here, what could the Asia Pacific contribution look like for you over the next five years? So globally, uh, India, uh, for us, is a footprint exporting not only engineering components, also exporting some complete trains. And we have exported trains in Australia, uh, for example, both uh, in Metro and Sydney, but also in Queensland. Uh, we have exported Metro uh, in, in Montreal, so we are also uh, exporting in different places uh, of the world. Asia Pacific overall uh, is uh, probably the fastest growing uh, part of the world uh, for, for a stop. And it's today, it's representing up to, I would say, 20% 20, 20 mm. uh, of, of Alstom. And it's, it's growing, it's growing fast. Uh, and we are present in Asia Pacific from Australia. You know that yeah. Australia is booming in terms of public transportation. It was probably lagging behind uh, in the recent past. So they are investing a lot, particularly in urban transportation. We are very much present in Southeast Asia, in all countries of Southeast Asia. We have inaugurated a, a monorail uh, quite recently, for example, in, in, in Bangkok, but we are present in Malaysia, in Singapore, we have a metro in Vietnam as well. Mm. We have also been just awarded a metro in Philippines. So, as you can see, we are present in all, uh, all these regions, in Taiwan as well. So, it's a very large market for us, a very uh, a dance market, I would say. You know, the export opportunity that you've been touching upon uh, and, and you believe that India is going to be able to leverage that for uh, you and of course for the country as well. Uh, a slightly longer term trajectory of how much headroom for growth potentially do you believe uh, the export market could throw up for Alstom from India? Well, I think it's, it's an immense, uh, an immense uh, potential uh, for the export, I mean. Uh, we are working on, with the Indian Authority as well uh, to make sure that financing is available. So we are working on some opportunities which were uh, not envisaged before for, to uh, Central Asia, to Middle East, Africa. As, as the manufacturing capability, the manufacturing quality is improving in India, more and more countries are open uh, for the uh, Indian uh, imports on that mm -hmm. case. Uh, there are also, and I uh, clearly encourage that, a lot of discussion on free trade agreements between India and other countries which will help uh, to, uh, for the import-export uh, from India. So I, I can see as, as that as a, a, huge, a huge potential which will be again coupled uh, with uh, local uh, growth as well because the market in India will grow uh, very fast. So I not be surprised that in the coming years India will be by far, by far the largest country for Alstom. been interesting about the Indian market for you as you've gone about uh, investing, especially in the last decade or so, uh, as the infrastructure story has really uh, come to open up. What's been the interesting and unique aspects of operating in India for you? Well, what is unique? First, it has been a, 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 a fantastic challenge for us. We started relatively small a few years ago and quite timely, I, would, I have to say, because it was at the beginning of the, the, the ramp up and the growth, infrastructure growth uh, in India. And we have always been up to the expectations. Mm. So our, our colleagues in India have always kept up with the, all the expectations, both in terms of growth, because we had to recruit so many uh, new uh, colleagues, in terms of agility, in terms of capability, and in terms of technology. So we are now innovating more and more from India. I mean, for example, uh, the most sophisticated signaling system, it's uh, the ERTMS, uh, it's a hybrid level 3, it's a little bit technical, but the most sophisticated uh, European standard uh, signaling system is being implemented today in India. So the, we have not only moved in terms of quantity, in terms of quality, but also uh, in terms of technological content. You know, speaking about signaling, and we've had a horrific accident take place in India uh, just a short while ago. Has there been any fresh conversation with the government on the signaling side of things uh, with Alstom? 
Well, clearly, and, and this was uh, a very uh, terrible uh, accident and a bitter, bitter reminder about the importance of uh, safety on, on, in railway and the importance of signaling systems uh, in railway. So, of course, uh, Astom is here in India and will make sure that we can provide any uh, technology which has been required. But there is already a, a huge investment plan by the government to deploy uh, signaling systems throughout the country. Uh, so we are participating to, to this plan and, of course, the fastest, the, the best uh, to avoid uh, as much as, as we can, of course, uh, this kind of accident. You know, I want to talk about the changes that we're seeing for Alstom globally as well. And you've uh, embarked on a strategy uh, to ensure that the company remains agile, remains dynamic. It responds to uh, the challenges uh, that we are presently faced with, but also is future ready. And as part of that is really the move towards a greener uh, Alstom, a noise reduction, passive experience, all of those things are something that uh, you've been focused on and working on. Hydrogen uh, and the German launch was the, was the big milestone that you've been able to achieve. What should we realistically expect in terms of innovation as well as further milestones that you hope to achieve on that front? Well, you said it very well. One of our main goals in terms of innovation is to improve the environmental performance of our products. This comes through energy saving primarily. Uh, because most of our trends are electrical trends, so we need to make sure that each generation basically consumes 20% less energy than the previous generation. So we achieve that for locomotives, for metros, or the very high-speed train that we are just launching in, in, in Europe. Each time we save 20% energy. But we have some parts of, of the network which is not electrified. Uh, it's true uh, in Europe. It's and more so in the U.S., but most of it is not electrified, and it's true in India as well. And for that, we need to invent, to develop some uh, green technology, green traction. And you have two uh, options, if I may say, battery for short holes or the hydrogen option. And as you have said, this year has been a, a very important year in that perspective because we have not only we have broken the record more than 1,175 kilometers of autonomy with uh, few cells, mm. but we have, as importantly, more importantly, two lines uh, which are now under operation uh, in Germany. Of course, we need for that to have a green hydrogen for it to make sense, and for that we need to have a, a complete supply chain of hydrogen. So uh, I, I was, uh, as you know, discussing with the uh, Indian CEO two days ago, it was in, in, back in, in Paris, and there was a, a general consensus to uh, make hydrogen as one of the future uh, technology, needed technology uh, in India for the development of uh, sustainable uh, infrastructure in India. Uh, the government is focusing on green hydrogen and in fact there's been a scheme that's been announced by the government to push uh, the, the production of green hydrogen and set up that ecosystem here in India. But you spoke about speaking with Indian CEOs. You also met Prime Minister Modi. Uh, uh, he was in France for the Bastille Day celebration for, as the guest of the honor. Uh, uh, you know, what was the sense, what was the message that you, uh, that you got from the Prime Minister about uh, expanding here, investing further in India? Well, my minister was extremely uh, positive on and welcoming on the investments and the green investment in particular in, in India. So it was very uh, refreshing and very uh, positive to hear him uh, welcoming us uh, here in India. All what is a sustainable uh, agenda, uh, net zero in 2070, uh, as we know, infrastructure development, as well as on the make in India. And of course, to Alstom, it's... Uh, it's music to my ears. I mean, we have invested a lot in India to be uh, compliant with Make in India, and not just to be compliant with the law or the policy, but also because we strongly believe uh, that this is the way to uh, do business in India, and it's also for the interest of Astom uh, to be uh, fully, fully embedded uh, in the local environment, in the local infrastructure. Uh, so I think there are a lot of uh, very positive uh, messages which are encouraging our investment even further. So how much would you say you've invested in India over the last five years and what could you potentially look at investing in India over the next five years? Well, it's, to some extent it's a little bit exponential. We have invested more than 300 million euros in CapEx. But you know, more than CapEx, uh, for us, it's uh, of course the capabilities and the engineering capabilities. The fact that we have more than 12,000 employees now in India, more than 5,000 engineers uh, in Bangalore doing, I said, 25% of all our trains worldwide. I mean, this is uh, our main investment in addition to our manufacturing sites. We have six uh, manufacturing sites. 
Trasai, uh, it's uh, both are equally important the physical investment as well as the know-how investment uh, which has been great over the recent years. Do you intend to up your headcount at your Bangalore facility and are you looking at any further manufacturing uh, facilities? We are, so we are increasing our headcount year after year in Bangalore uh, and that's where we are setting up other uh, uh, investment, uh, other engineering centers in Hyderabad for example. So. Uh, we are welcoming, uh, take the opportunity of speaking to you to say that we are welcoming a lot of engineers uh, in our several engineering centers. Yes, in terms of manufacturing capacity, we are increasing our capabilities and capacities in our different sites. Uh, we, can, we have one site in Madhepura, for mm -hmm. example, as you know, and we'll be uh, relatively opportunistic on whether we extend uh, one site or whether we open new sites. We're opening uh, new depots. I was uh, this morning visiting a depot. We are doing some maintenance operations and so forth. So it really depends on the different contracts that we are uh, uh, achieving, completing. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things that I know Alstom is focused on is improving your uh, metric as far as diversity and inclusion is concerned. And you want to have women in managerial roles, in engineering roles, from the current almost 24% to about 28% by 2025, 2026. Uh, uh, how, how strongly are you pushing that and how important is that going to be for you here in India as well? So, globally is extremely important for us. I think it's extremely important for us to be inclusive, uh, not only in its employee base, if I may say, but also on its product. So, we are looking a lot on our product, how our products are designed, manufactured, developed, uh, in order to, be, uh, uh, to welcome all types of passengers. Uh, and that's... Uh, of course for people with uh, disabilities and difficulties and so forth so that we are accommodating all our products. Internally we are working on all kind of uh, inclusion, diversity. By the way, we are talking about gender diversity which is extremely important for us. We are also talking about any kind of cultural, national diversities. We are making sure that people can exchange uh, places. Uh, for example, to take an example, a lot of Indian colleagues are traveling you know, around the world. So we have. Uh, around 150 to 200 Indian colleagues mm -hmm. uh, which are employed in different sites of ASCOM worldwide. So we are also mixing the nationalities and the culture so that people can be more creative. And as far as women are concerned, yes, we are putting a lot of focus on gender diversity globally, I mean, and gender diversity not, uh, in operations as well, engineers, and in India. Gender diversity is very uh, related to local mm. uh, cultural habits. Uh, so we are also a lot of pushing the local uh, management to take local actions. Uh, for example, just one, one of the uh, actions that we can take in India is to make sure that women can drive safe home uh, at night so that uh, if they have to stay uh, long hours at, at, at offices, we are making sure that somebody will accompany uh, them when they are driving back home or something like that. So all, all kind of, you know, sometimes it's day-to-day -day actions mm. so that everybody feels comfortable and, and of course, uh, in particular, uh, all, all the women. Well, you know, let me end then by asking, you said that this is uh, a, a unique time because literally every market of yours is firing irrespective of the macroeconomic challenges, be it Europe, the US or Asia Pacific. So what would worry you if the supply chain issues are starting to ease, uh, hopefully inflation will start to ease as well, what are you most concerned about today? What could impact uh, your guidance that you've held out? Well, Today we have a very large backlog as you have said, so the first challenge of Alstom is execution. So we need to deliver this backlog, we need to embark a lot of new people, for example uh, new engineers in India, uh, several thousands of new engineers in, in India, we need to train them uh, in order to deliver, to always deliver with the same level of quality and customer satisfaction. So my worry is not the market, as I said, the supply chain is improving. So the most important factor is our own internal uh, quality and delivery capabilities. With this kind of growth, uh, we need to be uh, perfect in, in our delivery. Well, we wish you the very best of luck with the execution roadmap. And thank you very much for joining us here to take us through what the road ahead looks like for Alstom in India and what the global outlook uh, is as well. Always a pleasure. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of the Global Dialogue. From all of us here on the team, for now, goodbye and thanks for watching.